Hello guys, this is Paul from Pampadu and welcome to the fifth episode of our series LSDJ Hidden Tips and Tricks. In this episode, I'm going to cover uh, key combinations and, so and shortcuts and other tidbits that you can use to optimize your LSDJ workflow. So we're going to cover several things. Um, highlighting, copying, pasting, cutting and erasing. And then we're going to talk about cloning and the different behavior that it has, how the clipboard behaves, and other tricks that I have discovered that can really help um, save space in your save file. That is that, as we all know, is pretty limited. And uh, yeah, overall, optimize the way you work on a track in LSDJ. Uh, you might notice that in this video, I'm using a gamepad visualizer that uh, translates my. Uh, controller inputs into visual information. This is courtesy of a lovely web app called GamepadViewer.com so go there and donate a coffee to the guy because he's done great work. And this is going to help a lot of streamers and a lot of tutorial videos from here on out. Great guy. Okay, so without further ado, let's start. First off, we're going to talk about copy pasting. This is a fairly basic technique that is mentioned in the manual that everybody I think should know. Uh, so if you already know about it, you, you might want to skip to the next chapter. I'm going to leave a timestamp in the description, I think. But still, um, you might even learn something new. I don't know. So how do we copy paste in LSDJ? Uh, so the basic key press for this is select plus B. And what select plus B does is that it lets you highlight a section of the screen. This also works in other screens, but yeah, we're going to deal with that first. When you press select B, you enter highlight mode. And then when you've highlighted your section, pressing B again will undo the highlight and copy what you've highlighted into the clipboard. This is going to be more chilling if I do this. Select B, arrows, B. So this is now copied into my clipboard. In order to paste, I need to copy something into my clipboard. So select B, then B, and then press select plus A. So here, I copy pasted this whole section. Really practical. Now, if I've, did, if I've made a mistake, I can also cut it. So when you have nothing highlighted, what you can do is also select B, highlight, and instead of pressing B to copy, press select, then A, and this cuts what you've highlighted into the clipboard. And you can paste it again with select A. So select A twice, it's like, when it's highlighted, select A is cut, and when it's not highlighted, select A is paste. Uh, be careful, because when you cut something, if you choose to highlight another section, you will inevitably lose what you have copied into the clipboard. Here I have copied this section. If I choose to just select B, I enter highlight mode and in order to exit it, I have no choice but to do select A or B, which copies something else into the clipboard. So be really careful because you can lose sections like that. In any case, it's really useful. Uh, for example, I've had a lot of questions about how to air out your saves. You can actually copy and paste empty sections. For example, if I just do this and copy it, and I want to separate this section, I just go here, boom, paste an empty section on top. And all the same, if you want to erase an empty section and just link two phrases together, just highlight them and cut them. Oop. Be careful because this can also work this way and this can fuck up your alignment. So be careful here. But you can then un you can then undo it by doing this and copy pasting empty spaces as well. So here you go. I hope I wasn't too fast and that the key presses were clear enough on the visualizer. If not, uh, I will go over them one more time. Select plus B highlights. When highlight B cuts. Select plus A pastes what you have in the clipboard and when highlight, select plus A cuts. I hope that's clear enough. If not, just send me a message on Facebook or comment on this video and I will, I will run to your help. So I think that does it for cutting and 
for basic copy-paste cut. Then we're going to talk about cloning. Cloning is a super important technique that really helps um, speed up your workflow and make it more organic in LSTJ. Uh, now, everybody basically knows about cloning, I think. Uh, we're going to bring the project screen by pressing select up. But cloning has two parameters that are really important to master. Slim and deep. So first off, we're going to go with slim. Uh, basically, what cloning does, for example, I'm going to have two instances of my chain one. What cloning does is you cannot clone a section. You can on only clone something that you can once one value that you can highlight with your cursor. So select a value and then press select, hold select and then press B, then A while holding select. Now you have noticed that my section 1 has been transformed into section 27, but look inside, magic, it's exactly the same. What this enables you to do is to make really tiny adjustments, for example just this, without having to modify the first section. So this is really useful when you're building sentences, or musical phrases, and you just want to change one note, for example. Now, the difference between slim and deep cloning is that we have just cloned a chain, and within the chain are sentences, are phrases. If we choose to go with slim cloning, uh, it will clone the chain, but keep the phrases with the same value. If we go with deep cloning, it will clone everything so into a new, it, is, it actually clones everything into the next empty chain that it finds. And if you go inside, you're going to notice that this is the same chains that we have, but with a different value. So, slim cloning uh, clones only the chain, but keeps the phrase value intact. Deep cloning clones the chain, and clones every chain inside. So this is really useful to know, uh, because this lets you run through phrases much more often, but it's it's also really useful if you just want to, like, uh, if you just want to have the same sentence at a different octave, you just do a, a slim cloning, but if you want to do um, intricate modifications of every sentence inside, you, you're better off with deep cloning, but be careful about not running out of phrases. So I think that covers it for, for cloning. Now, we've talked about copy and paste, and I've only demonstrated it with uh, chains in the main screen. But this, this is not the only thing you can paste, and this is not the only thing you can clone. Um, to sum it up, you can copy, paste, clone almost everything. And I have found that everything you can highlight, you can copy, paste, and cut. And every value you can select, like this, you can clone. This might not be true for every value. For example, I don't think I can... Uh, copy a vibrato value. I, I don't think I can copy this, but I can I can I can clone instrument values, for example. If I want to have the same instrument but with a slightly different envelope and then do an alteration, I can just do this, and this is going to be the same instrument. But if I want to have a slightly different version, I just modify it, and this doesn't affect instrument one. Notice. Okay, so you can you can clone chains, you can clone phrases, you can clone instruments, you can clone you you can clone um, tables. So yeah, this works. You can copy paste chains. You can copy paste phrases. You can copy-paste 
uh, transposition values really useful you can copy paste sections of notes you can copy paste sections of instruments you can copy paste commands you can copy paste complete screens uh, you can copy paste what's inside the table be it volume section transpose transpose columns comments you can copy paste everything that you can highlight you can copy paste this and uh, one of the most exciting thing that I found that we can copy paste is waveforms uh, if you already know how to alter manual waveforms, this is really exciting if you want to make slight adjustments. For example, I'm going to find an empty synth patch. I'm just going to make a new instrument, new wave instrument. And find out which is the new, newest empty synth patch. Seems like 4 is unused. So, for example, I can press in the wave screen, I can just as easily as anywhere else, I can press select B and highlight a section of the waveform. I can highlight the whole waveform and copy paste it into the next, or I can just copy paste this and paste it into the next waveform. For example, if I if I choose to do this, let's alter the instrument a bit. Let's make sure that this is, for example, a square wave. And at volume 30, something like this. So we're going to have this in the wave screen. Square waves. If I want to add a bit of square wave to this, for example, I totally can. Beam. New wave. And this works with this works with a section, this works with the complete thing. This was a very breakthrough discovery that I made. Uh, thanks to Claire Abugilists, uh, which is who is they them awesome Game Boy artists from Australia. Shout out to them. They them Follow them, they're great, and they're the biggest LSDJ wizards I know with Hypnogram. They're great. Uh, okay, so copy-pasting, even for something that you don't know you could. Try it out in every screen, report back your find your findings. We might even discover new, thing that, new things that you could copy-paste. This is super, super important. Oh, another thing that's... I didn't know you could copy but actually, actually this has been a feature since version 3 point something but if you copy for example this a section of chains and then load an empty song the clipboard will still be here so you can copy uh, sections of chains from one song to another but now notice this will just copy the value that you've pasted, so this is a bit tedious. Uh, I have nothing in here, because in this song, nothing corresponds to chain 1b. Um, but it's still useful. For example, if you have a template song with preloaded uh, instruments, you can basically copy-paste sections from one song to another that will use the same instruments, and this is a very easy way of uh, of making remixes, for example. But yeah, do remember that this will just copy-paste values, but nothing that it corresponds to, because this is this is not what's copied into the clipboard. The, the clipboard only behaves with values, and because in this save I have something in chain 1b, this is going to tell 1b, and 1b is going to call what's inside it. But if I copy 1B to a new song, and if in this song 1B calls something else, this is what it's going to do. 
So this is a very nifty feature, but it has its limitations. Because, yeah, the memory is handled in such a way that um, clipboard only copy and paste values. And not, for example, processor instructions or... But you can you can still copy-paste, I think, I think if you copy-paste this, you can still copy-paste a chain of 4 times 24 in another song. And I think you can still copy-paste this into another song. Uh, but then you'll have to remake this instrument. And I'm not sure you can... I'm not sure you can actually copy paste instrument value, instrument parameters, but I'm sure you can, for example, copy paste a table into another song. And let's see what else. This, I'm sure you can. Waveform values. Everything you can copy paste, you can copy paste into another song, but only the values, not the parameters themselves. So this is still an, inter an interesting feature to have. As I said, if you have. If you work with template save files, like if you have a pre-made, if you have pre-made instruments, like for example, zero to ten is leads and ten to twenty is drums, for example. If you keep template save files, and then you copy paste uh, this into your new song, then it'll sound great. It it'll sound like like the previous version. But yeah, keep in mind that clipboard only keeps values, but not parameters. Okay, um, now that's over. Now that's over with. Um, how can we best optimize the LSDJ workflow thanks to copy pasting? When you clone, be really careful about uh, deep and slim because you don't want to run out of phrases. And for example, you don't want to to copy paste two instruments or tables or chains of sections when you only need one. So be really careful. One of the best examples of this, for example, of using only two phrases to make a musical, uh, a musical motif is in this song, which is evasive maneuvers up on our SoundCloud. So you might think that this phrase, this chain, is full of different chains, but in reality, it's just five, six, five, six alternated in such a way that this is basically this is the same note. So if I just want to have it do this, I just use the transpose column and just use one phrase when I need when I don't need two. This is really telling. And this is... So I use this. This is just a transposition of the same sentence. The same musical sentence. And so with only two phrases, I do eight bars. Eight bars that work really well within the rest of the song. So what you can also do is, you might notice that I, I have sections that are highlighted, but not in the same way that the clipboard highlights stuff. This is called marking, and it's in the manual, but not, not a lot of people knows about it. And it's really useful to know where you are in your save. For example, here I know it's the intro, and here I know it changes, and here I know it changes again, and here I know the bass kicks in. And here I know that I have a break. And here I know that um, my break kicks in. And... Here I know that I, my pulse channel is not the same. Here I know it's my riser because uh, there's a lot of modification going on in the wave channel. New 
phrase. And here I highlighted everything because it drops. So you can use this however you want, like, for example, choruses, highlights, and verses not, or if you have a modification, just highlight a section to tell you, oh, jump to this instead of that when you're in live mode. And the key presses to highlight uh, a section is really easy. It's just B, B, B. Uh, you, I think you have a limited number of chains that you can highlight. This only this only works in the um, this only works in the um, in the song screen. By the way, I think there's a limited number of sections you can highlight. Uh, this is in the manual, I don't remember. So don't be too liberal with it. For example, I th think I overused it a bit here. It still, it's really useful to know where you are in your save file. And also, what I have not done here, and that I should do in order to really make it life-friendly and uh, make it more visible and less of a pain to look at, is air stuff out with empty sections. For example, this, and this, and this. This is useful for a number of reasons. First of all, it airs stuff out, and visually it's more pleasing. And secondly, it loops together. So if you're in live mode and you screw up something, you just go back to this loop instead of uh, having an unsynced section starting together at the wrong time. For example, if I'm, if I'm looking for the next section to, to jump to, I have time, because this is just going to loop back to this. If I'm wondering, oh, do I go back to the break, or do I go back to a column section? I have time to decide. Loops back. So yeah, empty sections make um, make the loops go back within themselves. Uh, then other things you can do to improve your workflow or boost your creativity in OSDJ is mark chains, air stuff out, and also adjust the key delay repeat. I don't know what the default value is, but this has an importance. Uh, I have not done a video on grooves, tables, or ticks yet, but yeah, basically, if you know what ticks are, the way this works is um, the first digit uh, is the number of ticks that it will take for a key to be repeated, and the second digit is the number of ticks it will take for a repeated information to uh, repeat again. For example, if I do something ridiculous like F1 and if I press down you will notice it will go down a notch and then down very fast because I have F ticks for the first press and then one tick for the information to repeat. So if you want to keep yourself from going too fast this is a good combination my favorite one is usually 6-1 or 7-2, something like this. So this is pretty organic, not too fast, and there's not much of a delay. If your delay is too fast, with one presses you might end up going down two rows, so I usually keep it at 6-2. And this is also important for the start select trick. For example, if you're at 6-6, and in song mode you press you hold select and press start. Uh, let's go there. You can also alter it to go faster. Okay, so adjust this to your tempo. Usually this is fast. Uh, this is good for stuff like 160, this is good for 140, this is good for 120. So yeah, not very organic, not very intuitive, but yeah, you get the gist of what I'm doing here. 
Uh, yeah. Also, what I do use very extensively in order to boost creativity and have a fresh take on my tracks is this. Here I'm using a, I'm using a, a key. But you have, in the project screen, you have a tempo information that you can alter. And you have also a transpose value. For it. This transpose to the number of semitones up and this transpose to the number of semitones down. So if I want to have a fresh listen to my track, I just transpose it to one or two. And this can give me a lot of ideas, uh, because your track will sound really different, and, this, and then you can say, oh, I didn't think of it that way, and this is what I'm gonna do. And I'm going to load up this track, for example, transposing while your track plays is also really interesting because then, then you can do impromptu key changes, for example, with this section. Now watch what I'm gonna do. Just the same, just transposed. I'm just transposing it on the go uh, to experiment with key changes and chord progressions. What you, what this sound like? What this should sound like? Vanilla is this. I'm just looping back. But what I do is I just play with the transposition column, and it gives me a whole new perspective on what I can do. Uh, for example, in the new version of Star, uh, I use this live, because I don't want to just clone everything and have, it, have, have them be in a new key, for example. So Here is the second exposition of the theme. Actually, I should, I should be in this key. Then, to make the drop a little fresher, I'm going to do this. So, alter the presses, hold A and release when you want. Okay, once again. This should be in this key. But if you do it organically enough, you can do really cool chord changes and give a whole new feel to your track. And release. So you've noticed um, you can hold A and press the arrows to bring to bring up a new key, but it will only take effect when you release A. So this is really uh, interesting to me to do it in a timely manner live. And the other track I use this in is Artifact, the Chipwin submission, where everything is supposed to be in the same key, but the second section is transposed one semitone up. Uh, same goes for tempo as well. You can just press A, change tempo, and then when you release, the tempo change is applied. So, for example, if I go to my... I think it's there. Yeah, this... I think it's this. Watch this. By holding A. And now I have modulated my whole track uh, one semitone up. So this is really useful. Uh, be careful. Sometimes L commands and other pitch bends can react differently and low notes can rub to the next octave if you're not careful uh, with how liberally you use this. For example, I could do just a... So yeah, uh, lot of cool st lots of cool stuff you can do in live mode or even in song mode. This works in song mode too, in song mode. But yeah, use transposition, uh, copy paste, clone, just go crazy with all these tricks and you will find that hopefully your LSDJ workflow will be a lot more interesting and a lot more fresh. 
I think that wraps it up for this video. I don't want it to be too long. Uh, I've received comment that my one hour long videos on the Wave channel was not really <laughs> watchable. So I'm trying to keep it under 20 minutes. Hopefully uh, this will be the case. Thanks for staying so long with me. Thanks for watching. Don't hesitate to like and subscribe. Comment if you want us to cover a new section of LSDJ in the next video. React, did you like this video? Was it uh, easy enough to understand? Please let us know so that we can improve. For the French people watching me, I am in the process of adding subtitles in French to my videos. Uh, if Spanish people want to watch them, I can also add Spanish subtitles because I speak Spanish, so no problem with that. Just send me a request and if there's enough of you requesting for it, I will take the time to do it. Thanks for watching, this has been Pamperdu Hidden Tips and Tricks for LSDJ. Um, see you in the next video!